Welcome to the Linux Academy Server Lab for installing the mean stack with Ansible. I'm David Singler. This lab will introduce you to Ansible and how it can be used to automate the mean stack installation. By the time we're done, you should be able to create simple tasks using Ansible and execute those tasks on your remote nodes in order to deploy the stack. So, if you're ready to begin, let's go ahead and get started. In this lab, we'll need two instances of Ubuntu 14 so that we can have one for our master and one for our node server. We can create those from the servers section of Linux Academy in the server lab control center. We'll use the distribution dropdown to choose Ubuntu 14 for both our master server and our node server. So once these things have been created, we'll see their IPs start to populate and we'll get access to this tag section. So the tags here are nothing more than just labels. I'll set my master to primary, and my node to node. That'll just help us keep track. So in just a moment, we'll be using our public IPs for these servers to log in via SSH. Down the line, we'll be using our public host names inside of our Ansible playbook, but we'll be able to refer back to this page very quickly. So just keep it up. We'll be needing it soon. Now let's go ahead and launch terminal so we can log in with SSH. I'm going to make two separate terminal windows side by side, with the left side representing my master, and the right side representing my node. This can just help us keep things clear of which is which. Now we can navigate back to our server lab control center and grab the public IP of our primary server first. And we can log in with SSH and the default user of just user at and my public IP for the server. You may have to first accept the key signature for the handshake and then you'll be asked for the password and the default is just 123456. So once we're actually into Ubuntu, let's go ahead and change our default user password, just for security. And we do that with the password user command. It'll ask us to verify our current password, which is again 123456, and enter a sufficiently complex new password. And we'll have to do that one extra time for confirmation. Let's go ahead and get rid of the root default password. So log into root with su, and it will prompt for our root password. The default is 123456, and we'll be forced to change it. And again, this is asking for now the current one more time of 123456. And now we get to create and confirm our new password for root. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and exit the root user, and we'll repeat the exact same steps now for our node server. So go back and grab your node server's public IP, log in with SSH with all of the default information, and be sure to change your user password and your root password. Okay, so now we're ready to set up and configure Ansible on our master instance. Ansible requires Python to work properly, so our master instance here needs to have a package called Software Properties Common, which includes the Python libraries. So first, let's run a sudo apt-get update to make sure our repositories have been updated. Afterwards, we'll do an apt-get install for the software properties common package. In this case, we've already got it, but it's a good idea to just go ahead and run it to make sure that we do have it. Now we can add the repository for Ansible with a apt add repository, and we'll define the PPA colon Ansible slash Ansible. Once this finishes up, we can do another apt get update just to make sure we have everything updated and install Ansible with sudo apt get install Ansible. Once Ansible is finished installing, we're ready to configure it. We're looking for a configuration file in the etsy slash Ansible directory. I'm going to use nano to edit it. You can use whichever one you like the best, whichever text editor, but be sure you put sudo here. We'll need elevated permissions to modify this file. Inside the configuration file, we'll want to uncomment the inventory line that's pointing to the etsy Ansible hosts file. We'll be modifying that shortly. And also the sudo user, we want this to be set to root. So uncomment both lines. Afterwards, be sure you write and save the file and exit. And I'll use the head command here just to make sure that my changes were indeed saved and we could see that they were. Up next, we'll create our Ansible inventory where we can create groups of nodes and give them names so that we can easily have Ansible execute tasks on them. When we modified the configuration file a moment ago, you may remember that we uncommented the inventory line that pointed to the etsy Ansible host file. 
If we take a look inside this directory, we'll see the host file here. Let's go ahead and back up the default. We'll just move this host file to host.back. And of course, we'll need sudo here. Now let's make a new host file. I'll again use nano, but you can use whatever you like. Here in the Ansible inventory, we can define names of groups in square brackets. Underneath that name, we can list the identifiers of the machines that we'd like to have inside of that group. So first up, let's make a group called local, or we'll point to our local host for the local Ubuntu instance. Let's make another group and we'll call it nodes. And here's where we would list all of our node machines. In our example here, we're only using one. So let's head back to the Linux Academy server page and grab the public host name so that we can put it in our nodes group. That's all we need for our example here. So let's write and quit. Let's move on and create an Ansible user on each machine for organization. We can create a user with the add user command and specify that we want this user to be called Ansible. Again, I'll need sudo. We'll set a password and then leave all of this information the default, just blank. In a few moments, we'll be creating some Ansible tasks that require elevated permissions to run, such as apt-get. Let's modify the sudoers file so that the Ansible user doesn't require a password every time it needs to use sudo. We can do this with sudo vi sudo. And under the root entry of the user privilege specification, let's add an entry for Ansible. With Ansible, we'll have all equals all with the no password option all. That should do it for this sudoers file, so write and quit. Now we can move over to our node machine and do the same thing. So we'll first create the Ansible user with the password, default information, and then modify the sudoers file again to allow sudo access without the need of a password. Once you're finished there, write and quit the file. Just to quickly demonstrate what we've done, we can run sudo apt-get update, for example, and see that we do not need the password anymore. Now, back on our master, we'll sign into the Ansible user and use the hyphen here to get us into that user's environment. Now that we've signed in, let's create a key and copy it over to the node server. We'll use SSH keygen here. Leave the default file name and an empty passphrase just for this example. Once it's been created, we can use the SSH copy ID command and point to the Ansible user of our node server. And we can find the address of our node server back on Linux Academy in the server lab section. So just paste that in and it should copy over. Now you'll need to put in the password of the Ansible user on your node machine if you happen to use something different. Now that our environment is set up, we are finally ready to create our Ansible playbook for installing the mean stack. In order to build up an organized playbook, we need to divide our problem into tasks. In this lab, we're going to be using four separate files. We'll have a main.yml file that will work as our overall view of what our tasks will be. We'll use includes to point to other YML files for subtasks, and those being the installation of, of Git, MongoDB, Node.js, etc. Let's just go ahead and make a working directory. I'll call mine Ansible Mean, and then we'll navigate into that directory. Use your favorite text editor to make a main.yml file and set it up as follows. Remember back to our Ansible inventory where we had a list of node servers, and in our case, it was just the one node server, but nevertheless, we called the group nodes. So here we'll tell our Ansible playbook that our hosts will be that nodes group. Next up, we'll define the user that we want it to use. And remember, we created the Ansible user and we'll instruct it to actually become that user with sudo. We can also define general variables to use throughout our Ansible playbook. I'll create a variable named temp folder and point it to the temp directory of root. We'll use this variable later on when we're installing stuff. Now we're ready to lay out the outline of our tasks. We can lead into this with the tasks keyword. I mentioned previously that we're using includes for separate YML files to keep everything very organized. I'll leave a comment denoted by the hash symbol that just lets us know that we're installing the prerequisites for this include. So we'll do an include statement here that points to a file that we'll create in a moment called tasks slash prerequisites.yml. Let's carry on and do the same for a MongoDB installation. And we'll make this file in a moment, but let's point it to tasks slash mongodb.yml. And one more time for node.js. 
That's all we need here, so I'll write and quit, and just verify that my changes were saved, and indeed they were. So now we'll want to make these actual files that we've included. And we'll begin by creating that tasks folder that'll hold all three YML files. The first step to preparing our mean stack on the nodes servers is to install git. We'll do this in a prerequisites.yml file where we can define the task to get that installation done. So create the file with your favorite text editor. Now consider how we typically would install git. We would use the apt git command. Ansible has a module called apt that does the exact same thing as apt git, but we're going to use a different syntax. Let's begin by giving this task a name. It's a good idea to be descriptive in these names so that when everything is running later on, we know where we're at in the execution. Since this task is to install git, let's just call it install git. Next, we indicate that we'll be using the apt module, which requires that we name the package we want to talk about. We'll tell it that the state is present, meaning that we want it to be present. That means if it's not there to get it, if it's already there, awesome, we're good to go. We just are telling it that we want it to be there. And if you think back to how we typically install git, we would usually run a sudo apt git update first. Well, we can tell it to do that with an update cache set to yes. This will have it update the cache before installing git. So this looks great to have git installed. So let's write and quit the YML file. Moving on, we can create a mongodb.yml file in the tasks directory again. So here we'll create a couple different tasks matching the typical installation of MongoDB. And if you think to the process of that, we typically have to import a public key, we have to add the repository, we have to install, and then start the service. To complete each one of those steps, we'll create tasks using the equivalent Ansible modules for each command we would use. First up, we'll import the public key for MongoDB. So let's begin by giving a name. I'll call mine MongoDB and also indicate that this particular task is to import the public key. Now I'll indicate that we're going to use the apt key module for Ansible. That requires we get a key server, and we use this URL, and an ID of, in this case, EA312927. Our next will be, again, I'll call it MongoDB. So this is a new task now, but this time it's for adding a repository so I'll put that here. This one will use the apt repository module. We'll give it a file name and the repository. Indicate that we want the state to be present. So again, if it's there, it will just move on. If it's not, it will get it. And we'll tell it to do the equivalent of the apt get update with the update cache. The next task is to install MongoDB. I will name it appropriately and we'll be using the apt module here. The name of the package is mongodb-org. The state is present, so again, if it's not there, get it, if not, move on. And we'll tell it to update the cache first. And our final step is to ensure that the mongodb service is running, and we'll use the service module, name the process, and tell it that we want it to be started. This looks great to install MongoDB. We'll write and quit the file. If you've been keeping up so far, you realize we have one more include that we haven't created yet, and that's the nodejs.yml file. So let's go ahead and create it in the tasks directory. Now here we have several things to, to complete before we will have Node.js installed properly. We have to get the install script first. We have to make sure it's executable. We have to then execute it. Then we can clean it up, just get rid of it, then we'll actually install node.js and then install Bower and Gulp. It sounds like a lot, but it won't be too bad. Let's just dive right in and break it down piece by piece. So first, we needed to get the installation script. So I'll create a new task, name it appropriately, and indicate that we'll, we'll use the git URL module, provide a URL and a destination. And here I'm using the temp folder variable that we created earlier. The next task is to fix the permissions so that we can execute the script. We'll do that with the file module. We'll point it to the path of the script and indicate that we want execution permissions. The next task is to actually execute the script. So we'll use the shell module, again using the variable and pointing to that script. 
having it execute this. Once it's executed, we should not need to run it again, so we might as well clean it up. And we can do that with the file module. Point to the path of the, the file you want to manage, and we'll say that we want it to be absent. If it's there, delete it. Now to install Node.js, we need the build essentials and Node.js packages. We can use the apt repository to get both of these in a clever little way. So we'll define a variable here called item, say that we want to get it, so present. We want it to update the cache first. But what's item? Well, we need those two things. So we can use the syntax with items to define a list of things that will get plugged into that variable. So we'll put build essential and node.js here. This is just the syntax Ansible uses for a looping style idea. Our final task for this node.js is to install Bower and Gulp globally. So we use the same technique, but this time using the npm module. We'll define a variable for the names, state that we want to install them or have them present, and that we want to do so globally. And just like the previous one, we'll define the items here. Just list them out. All right, this looks like everything we need. You can write and quit the file. Excellent, so we have actually now set up our entire Ansible playbook and we're ready to run it. But first, let's recap what we've done. Let's take a look inside of our main.yml file. Remember that we use this as the basic framework for our playbook, and we included different files, the prerequisites, the MongoDB, and the Node.js, all inside the tasks directory. So if we look inside the tasks directory, we see them there. At this point, I am very ready to run this Ansible playbook to watch it deploy the mean stack on our Node server. So let's do that with Ansible playbook. Point it to the main.yml file and run the command, and we should start to see some output. If you get any errors here, you'll need to go through and make sure your setup matches mine. If you haven't made any typos, however, you should start to see output that looks very similar, if not exactly the same as mine. You'll begin to see all the tasks and the names that we gave them and their execution status on the node server. So if it makes any changes to the node server, we'll see changed. If it has something to check, we'll see OK, if everything's OK. As it gets down to the bottom, we'll see a play recap, which gives us an overall view of the tasks that were completed. We can see that we have 12 OKs and 10 things were changed. Taking a look back at our node server, we can see that some stuff has absolutely happened. We see that Git has been installed, MongoDB, Node.js, Bower, Gulp. This is of course the result of how we've set up our Ansible playbook throughout the video. Now of course this is a small example of what Ansible is capable of, but it's hopefully given you a good idea of what you can do with Ansible. I hope this helps you get out there and create your own tasks and start using Ansible to your advantage. I'm Davis Singler, and this is LinuxAcademy.com.